Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Asta Darling and I am a Janome creator. And for today's project, I've got something pretty cool for you. So I don't know if you've seen the viral video of the girl in the white dress and she walks down the sun and her dress turns pink. Well, I saw it and then I went to the website and I looked at the dye and I saw pink to blue and I thought that is just begging for a Sleeping Beauty cosplay. So let's get into it and make it happen. I wound up ordering two bottles of this from solardust.com. You can hear the geese back there. They're getting ready for spring. And you may think, does it actually work? <laughs> yeah, it works. It works pretty fast. So it went from pink to this shade of blue. And then once I take it back inside, it's going to go to pink. So let's go get sleeping beautified. So the most important thing about this dye is once you dye everything, you can't iron it leads me to my next dilemma. Do I dye my fabric and then sew, or do I go ahead and cut all my pieces out, iron everything, put it together, press open all my seams, make sure it's all nice and flat, and then I dye the whole finished costume? So I started doing my pros and cons, and I think I'm gonna go ahead with make the full costume and then dye it. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work. I've never done this before, but I think that's going to be the smartest thing because my major concern is if I have bust curves, how am I going to go ahead and iron those flat and open? So I don't know. We'll see how it works. So I wound up making sure that my thread is 100% cotton because your fabric does have to be cotton. Otherwise, if it's polyester, it's not going to die. And this is all information I'm reading from the website. So. Mm. I wound up getting extra wide cotton, so we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting this out and put it together, and then we're gonna dye it. And I don't know, I'm a little concerned, but I'm really excited, so we'll just see how it goes. The pattern that I'm going to use is Hello Sachi's Guinevere pattern, specifically the Sleeping Beauty right here. I have made Hello Sachi's patterns before, so straight off the bat, I'm going to tell you, I have a very long torso and a very long waist, so I am going to have to put it together and alter the pattern. I always say if you're using someone's pattern for the very first time, make a mock-up. This is like my 50,000th time using this pattern, so I do not need a mock-up. But I will show you how I do lengthen the pattern. It's very easy, very straightforward. It takes just a couple of minutes and a little bit of math, but I will show you how I do it. I'll be back. So straight off the bat, you can see this is just, it's not gonna fit me at all. <laughs> My waist is here. So what I'm going to do is just take a tape measure and figure out how long I want it. So I'm gonna say that this is where I go. Oh, look, I match my measuring tape. I'm thinking I probably want it about 14. So I'm gonna add 14 and a half, 15 with all my seam allowance. And I'm going to take this right at the waist. You can see right here where it's marked waist. And I'm simply going to chop that and I will move the camera a little closer and show you how I'm going to extend this. So I've taped a couple of pieces together and made this one really big piece and uh, this is basically going to be my side and my back combined into one. Like I have extra wide fabric and I thought Let's just do this as easy as possible. This is the center front piece and it gets cut on the fold. So I'm not gonna film this part. I'm literally just going to lay my fabric in the floor and cut it out like you would normally do a skirt. Nothing special to this. It's just a lot of fabric and it's gonna be a little messy because I've got to move everything in here. So I'm gonna go do that and I will be back. This is where things kind of start getting messy. So I have finished with this pattern and now I can fold it up nicely and put it somewhere. This is the skirt. I don't normally cut in cotton, but I'm actually really pleased with it. I think it looks really nice. Yes, I added a train. I know, I I know, I like the drama. Um, I also overestimated how much fabric I need. So <laughs> I have a lot of extra fabric for this project. But here's the skirt. I just need to cut the center front now and figure out kind of, I guess, what petticoat I'm going to use, iron it, sew up the side seams, leave it to hang overnight, and start working on this bodice. 
Okay, one part, I'm going to cut all of my bodice pieces out. If you are like me and you don't like marking up your seam allowance, I have the coolest trick for you. I was tagged in this video on TikTok and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try it as well. Basically, it is taking a magnet, sticking it on your scissors, and that's your seam allowance. And it actually works. I didn't think it was gonna work. It actually does work. It's shocking. I just blown away. All right, so now I have cut all of my pieces out and I'm going to iron them and I'm gonna move back over to my table here. I'm gonna take my zip ties. They're literally just from Home Depot, whatever I could find. And I'm going to lay them all out and mark all of my bone and channel placement. Once I do that on every single piece, then I'm gonna move over to the sewing machine, start sewing all those channels down and then sew up all the side seams and try to get this where I can fit it tonight. And if I can't fit it tonight, there's always tomorrow, but I'm. I'm aiming for tonight. I'm on a deadline here. While everyone is at KatsuCon enjoying themselves, I am working on this dress and on a deadline. <laughs> I wanna be where the people are. I wanna see, wanna see them cosplaying, walking around. What's that place called? Oh yeah, KatsuCon. <laughs> I'm not coping well, people. I'm not coping well. I have FOMO. Okay, on one hand, yay, it's spring. On the other hand, yay, it's spring. And my allergies are killing me today. So anyway, we are back in the studio. I am going to go ahead and try to put my skirt together and I'm going to insert a zipper. And I left off with the lining. Surprise, surprise, I did not get it finished. I said I was going to and yeah, it didn't happen. So I'm going to just keep calm, carry on working on my lining and assembling all my pieces together. And then I am going to sew those together and hopefully make some progress today. I don't know. My allergies made me want to go back to bed, but right now we're just gonna keep on chugging along. I have assembled my entire skirt by sewing up the side seams. Now I've gone to the back and I have marked where my zipper is going to go and I have gone ahead and sewn up the back seam and I have backstitched a couple times where the zipper is going to end. Then I pressed my seam allowance. Now I'm going to take my zipper, I'm going to unzip my invisible zipper, and I'm going to get rid of this little wrinkle right here and iron that flat. Then I'm gonna take everything over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to show you why it is not scary at all to use a zipper foot on the M7. It's probably the easiest, easiest thing in the world. The machine literally does it for you, which is so nice. So anyway, let me get this ironed, and then I will take you over there, and we're gonna do it together. All right, remember when I was saying when you're using the M7, there is no fear of a zipper. So what you're going to do is go navigate over here to the little clothing, get your concealed zipper, and you're going to want to get the Z foot. It looks something like this. And basically it does it for you. If you're going to sew the right of the teeth, you're going to put your foot in and make sure the teeth go here. And I know that doesn't make sense. I promise I'll show you. But if you're going to use the left of the teeth, then you're going to put it in the right of the channel right here. So I promise it makes sense. I will show you. 
Let me go ahead and put the foot on. Okay, we're gonna do the right of the teeth. So I have to actually grab my fabric and let me move you to the side. See if we can do this. Should I base this first? Yeah, probably. But you know what? I like to live dangerously, so let's just not do that. All right, I'm going to try not to put my arm in here, but I also can't see the camera. So if I do, I'm sorry. Pinned it in place, based it, just see what I do, but don't do as I do. And let's see if I actually did this properly. Okay, so let me stick this up in this little hole right here. Again, I'm completely self taught with zippers, so this is just the method that works for me. Let's see, once I, I need to go eye in it, but. Okay, not too bad. Once I press it out, <gasps> nice. See, no fear of zippers with the Janome. I have the lining completely assembled. It is boned, ready to go. This is what it looks like. I just used whatever white fabric I had, nothing special. It is 100% cotton. That was the only thing I had to make sure of. And I have assembled the finished bodice, again, 100% cotton. Now comes the fun part where I get to match it up and see if I messed up. Which you never know until you get to the stage. Hopefully I didn't. So far it looks pretty good. Okay, all oh, my seams are matching together. Looking pretty good. Okay. Have to stretch just a little bit back there. Okay, it's all perfect. Yes! It's always like the really stressful part when you go to like match your lining and your outer fabric and something doesn't add up. So this all adds up perfect. So what I'm going to do is just pin them together with the right sides together. I'm gonna to pin them at the top, go ahead and sew them, turn it, fit the back, try to get this done tonight. I want to die tomorrow. We have pretty bad rub wet bleh. We have pretty bad weather for the rest of the week and tomorrow is my good day to dye everything. So I'm going to try to do that. I may have to get a third copy. I don't know, we're gonna try. And I did get the skirt done, so all she needs left is a waistband and she needs a hem. And I did mention, once I put this on and I ironed it, you can't even see that wrinkle of the zipper. I'm so proud of this zipper. Beautiful, beautiful. So everything's done. I mean, moving along. Also, can we take like one minute to admire how pretty this skirt turned out? I love it. I made a couple of alterations, just um, added a bit to the back just to give it a little more fullness, but she pretty. It reminds me of kind of an Edwardian walking skirt with a tiny sleeve that you can pick up, but I love her. She's pretty. Okay, bodice assembly time. This is officially the most tedious part, and that is just ironing everything and smoothing it down, turning it, clipping the edges, and mostly this is just me going through here and just constantly trying to make sure this is smooth. Welcome back to day three of this build. 
I'm ready for it to be over, not gonna lie. Okay, so where I stopped last night was I got the bodice completely turned and I just need to add one more boning channel, then add my grommets, but I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do that after it's all dyed. And then I need to just bind the bottom of this and I still need to add a waistband to this monstrosity. And then I can start the dyeing process. So I'm gonna try to finish this up in like an hour, maybe two, I don't know. And then hopefully get to dyeing today because I just wanna see how it works. I guess what, I just, this, this is the most exciting part is making it pink and then making it blue. So hopefully we can get to this today. Okay, well, I did start dying, and then we had a windstorm, and then we had a rainstorm, and then the temperature dropped. Here I was thinking we were having spring for a hot second. So I think this is probably gonna turn into a two-part video. Ugh. Well, I had every intention of getting this project done, and unfortunately the weather is just going to be against me for the rest of the week. So what I think we're gonna do is just go ahead, split this into a part two. So in the next part, we will talk about how to dye the fabric, kind of a list of a breakdown of what I've learned during this project, and then we will decorate the project and we'll have the final reveal. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video so far, and I can't wait to show you what I get up to. Bye, see you next time.